Silas. I better go for the dog. Stay here. I gotta say something. I need you to witness. Jeremy. Fifteen years ago, I, I saw a man, a gambler, sure man, and for keeping my mouth shut, he give me this land. <laughs> and that was the same as taking a bribe from the devil. <laughs> I've reaped what I deserved. My wife died giving birth to my boy. Never a crop. Sickness. No water. Anyways, Mr. Lancer, I, I down your name as a, a witness. Jeremy Hackett, with my dying words, bequeath this land back to the devil. But, Pa, you said this was going to be my land when I grow up. I love you too much, son. Think of mine. As soon as he gets better, we'll tear up that paper. Sorry for the boy, but why he wants that place is beyond me. It gives me the willies. Getting back to that will, Judge, couldn't we just set it aside as an irrational declaration of a dying man and let the land go to Silas? Murdoch, I don't want to equivocate, but you said Hackett seemed rational. Judge, are you trying to tell us that piece of paper's good? There are innumerable eccentric wills that have held up in our courts. Judge, you're living out of your time. You should have been living in Salem during the witch hunts. You can see it now all over the front page. Judge Bates fines for the devil in land dispute. Now, see here. You don't have to ignore the dying declaration. What about this? We give the devil a deadline. Huh? He's too busy, and he probably is, and he wants the ground as much as the boy. He either shows his hand or hereafter holds his peace. Amen. Well, I don't know that there's any precedent for this. Surely, Judge, you can bookworm any points of authority over the weekend. I'll look into it. And I better be on my way. We'll give the devil 72 hours. If he comes later, he can always appeal. Huh? Well, I'd be the last one to push the devil. That is, assuming there really is one. I'll post public notice in the clarion, citing high noon Monday as deadline. Good night. Sure thing, Judge. Give our best to Alice. What's the matter? I think I smell rotten eggs or sulfur or something. Sure have done a good job with Cindy, you know that? Look at that coat. Boy, if I'd known he was going to turn out like that, I don't think I would have given him to you. You taught him any new tricks? You had time. Poor Elon, such a long spell. Why don't you stick around? Turn him into a roping pony. Be good, but Cinder's more at home at our place. I know it ain't much. But it's the smells and the wind when evening's coming on. 
when it rains, going into your own shed. I don't think sin would be easy here. But thanks, Johnny. Besides, there's chickens to feed, and a cow, and a goat, and the other things. We can coop here. You know, I should have told you this three days ago. Now you probably think I'm lying to you, but, well, I wanted to surprise you. I got a beautiful mare that I would, uh, well, I'd love to breed Cinder with her. Really? On the true? On the true. And I tell you what, if the foal's a filly, it's yours, and if it's a stallion, he's mine. What do you say? I don't want to be gone when he comes. I want to ask him if I can still live there. You mean the devil? Silas. There's no devil coming to claim your land. Paul willed it to him. How do you know, Johnny? Who is the devil? I mean, is there a devil? <laughs> Look, I'm talking about live horse flesh. What do you say? A coal from Cinder? OK. <laughs> Been the blamedest spell of weather. Last night I was sweating like a stuck pig. Today I'm so cold, my joints are froze. Jelly, you keep looking at that watch like you're working by the hour. We just happened to be hungry. I hadn't heard the lunch time yet. What time is it anyway? He's got five more minutes. I mean, it's. Almost noon. something rotten in the cooler. Jill, if there was, I would have thrown it out. Because my joints ache, especially my elbows. Ah, well, have you set a place for the devil? Why, no, Judge, but there's always a place for you. Come on in. Here, Judge, sit here. Thank you. Mmm, that does smell good, Teresa. Well, I hope you enjoy it. Murder. We are thankful that... Who the devil bothers to knock around here? What are you whispering about? Arizona climate has improved your sister's health. My dear mother suffered from the same wheezing cough. Scott? And Johnny Madrid. I'm particularly pleased to find you here. I go by Lancer now. I know. But don't be ashamed of your past. And young Silas. Hello, son. Silas. The sight of that poor boy pains me deeply. You see, I've come to claim the Hackett land. On what grounds, Mr. Weir? This lien, signed by Jeremy Hackett. 
I loaned him $500 he desperately needed to pay off a gambling debt. He signed over his property to me in the way of a collateral. And unfortunately, he never repaid me. Well, yams, cornbread, everything but grits. My compliments, Teresa. dusty appearance, but I stopped by my place on the way over here and was surprised to discover a dry sulfur pit. An odious element, but it may have some commercial value. These signatures don't match. I understand Mr. Haggett was dying. Doubtlessly, he signed with a faltering hand. Right, Hoskins? Yeah, I guess that'd be right. Judge, does this lien preempt Silas's inheritance of the land? Well, now, Murdoch. His Honor was about to explain that my lien is the same thing as the first mortgage. Is that right, Ed? I, uh. Well, yes, Murdoch. That is, of course, assuming that Mr. Weir's document is valid. Well, as executor, could I pay off this note? The estate is bankrupt. I'd advance the money. Oh, dear Mr. Lancer, must we haggle pointlessly and over such excellent fiddles? What I'm trying to do, Mr. Weir, is to get for that boy what he is due. Now, that land is not worth $500. Yeah, how come you want it so bad? Johnny Madrid, a bargain is a bargain. I don't like you calling me Madrid. As you wish. But, Johnny, every man has his darker side. I saw you once shoot a man down about 10 years ago in a Santa Fe saloon. I marveled at your confidence, your grace, your speed. In fact, at the time, I judged you very nearly as fast as myself. Simple question, gentlemen. Either the land belongs to me or to the boy. Well, I'm going to establish the validity of this paper before I sign anything over to anybody. Why? Yes, of course, Mr. Lancer. That's exactly what I'd expect you to do. This is a thoroughly splendid repast. Thank you, Teresa. Hey, you don't need to hide, Sands. I don't think I like it here. I think I want to go home. Are you afraid of that man? You'd have to be afraid of him. He's going to be leaving soon. and having you good people for neighbors. I'm running late. Thanks again for the meal. Jell, you better see Mr. Weir to his horse. What? Where'd he go? He was standing right there with Johnny a second ago. Is that a horse? I don't hear none. But I didn't hear one ride up, either. You know what I think? I'll bet he's been skulking around here. Because I smelled sulfur this morning. I smelled sulfur last night, too, and then again just before he knocked. Jelly, you know what I think you ought to do? I think you ought to go out and catch yourself a toad with warts and hang it on your bunk.
little scared of the storm, Cinder. I feel better here, too. Home always feels better. the shotgun, Silas. You needn't be afraid, boy. I know who you are. You're the devil. <laughs> now, son, if I were the devil, I wouldn't need any note to get this land, would I? I'd simply claim it the way your father willed it. No, boy. I'm just another man who loves the soil. This is good soil, Silas. With a little water, we're going to do handsomely. It'll be nice having a bright young lad around to lend a hand. I see Dawn's first light, Silas. How about some flapjacks? I brought the makings just in case you might like to have some. into this morning. Well, all I know is the horse is gone, and no horse in the world can operate that latch. No, that boy run home. He was scared. He told me something. Well, let's go after him. 
I don't like them over there all alone. Uh, well, no, I got my chores to do. Maybe Scott will go. Jelly, will you quit acting like some kid in a graveyard? Come on. Yeah, how about some of this soccer molasses, son? No, sir, this jam's fine. All right. You know, you ought to be mighty relieved, Silas. This uncle of yours is a bookkeeper. If he came out as your guardian, first thing he'd do, he'd probably get rid of this place, drag you off to some strange city. Now, would that set well with you, son? No, sirree. Oh, stop calling me, sir. My name's Absalom. Uncle Ab, do you? Here, let's, let's lay a couple of more pancakes in there. You know, Silas, I think you really like my buttermilk pancakes. Yes, sir. What? I mean, sure do, Uncle Ab. <laughs> oh, boy. people. I make it my business, Silas. Every man has an Achilles heel. A what? A weakness. A weakness, son. And I'm going to teach you how to cash in on life, boy. Yes, sir. I don't think we're going to find water, Uncle Ab. Oh, yes, we are, son. Paul sure tried. How? By divining. I use my cane. I'm going to teach you how to divine, Silas. I'm going to teach you many wonderful things, boy. Just as soon as we get this title into my name, why, then we start. I think maybe you ought to tell Johnny Madrid how you feel about all this. All right. As soon as you finish eating, Silas, I'm going to give you some instructions in what is known as the manly art of self-defense. Boy, had a boy. Gee, Paul wouldn't even let me touch a gun. Man needs to learn how to defend himself, son, and the sooner the better. You stand back. See those three cans left? All right. You say when. When? Come here, son. I want to show you another one. Run in the house and get me some plates. How many plates you got there, son? Four. All right. You throw all those four plates into the air at the same time. Then you say when. OK, boy. When? I don't believe it. Good morning, gentlemen. Hi, Johnny. Guy, did you see Uncle Ab shoot? Yeah, we saw it. Don't you think the boy's kind of young for that kind of schooling? Johnny there was forced to shoot a man down before he was 16 years old. I'm sure he was most happy he'd prepared himself. Besides, it keeps my timing on. We were kind of worried about you, Silas, running off like that. I had to go after Cinder, Johnny. He broke out of the stall. Broke out? Fine horse you gave the boy, Johnny. Smart horse. You ready to go on back now, Silas? No cause for croach on you people. I like it here real good, Johnny. It's gonna be fun. All alone? Not anymore. Uncle Ab's moved in. Mr. Weir, aren't you kind of jumping the gun? I'm surprised at you, Johnny. Why, well, boy, I thought you'd written over here to tell me you'd found my note good. Hey, we're gonna find some water. Want to watch? Where do you think, son? Where do you think would be the best place for us to look first? Well, 
If we could have our druthers, I'd like it out there. The land's downhill, and we could irrigate the whole desert. That's uh, good thinking, Silas. You run get my cane. Bring us a shovel, too. I gotta watch this. Monday, Silas. We want a real deep one. He's sure smart, Johnny. Paul wouldn't have dug here in a hundred years. Well, I don't think anyone would have. I forgot, Johnny. Will you tell your dad not to bother writing my uncle? I don't even know him. Heck, it don't matter to me whose name the land's in. Let Uncle Ab have it. I'm gonna get to live here anyway. Well, look, uh, Silas, we already wrote your uncle. You know that. Oh. Well, would you have him write another letter? I don't want to leave here ever. How do you like that? About one minute ago, this place was worth about a nickel. Now it's worth about $20,000. Johnny, don't push that man any further. Not an inch. He's our natural. Look, I don't think I like the idea of losing that boy to the devil. I mean, if that's the way you want to put it. Just don't interfere in it. Oh, what are you talking about, Jelly? He don't want the boy. He wants his land. Well, then give it to him. Jelly, I want you to go on back to Lancer. Take Barranco with you. I know how to get Silas away from here. You sure you don't want me to wait? No. Go on, get out of here. When we finish our chores, Silas, I'll show you some magic for the cards. Honey? Silas, I'm all ready to breed uh, Cinder with my mare if you want. You want to come along, Uncle Ab? Well, not today, Silas. Well, you better come, because if uh, 
You didn't like the mirror I picked out. We'll pick out another one. Okay, John. Silas. Home chores come first, son. I prefer you to stay. Well, then I guess I'll have to take Cindy by myself. Is that all right? Cindy don't like to be away from me, Johnny. Well, I know. Uh, Jelly happened to take my horse, and I'd sure hate to walk. Johnny, the boy said he doesn't like to be separated from his horse. Now, I suggest that you depart afoot and alone. Mr. Weir. When Silas tells me I can't ride Cinder, then I'll walk. But you're not telling me. Come on. Silas, you leave now and don't ever come back. Go on out of here. Go on. Get Cinder. He'll be back and you better be gone, Mr. Weir. Come on. the heart out of this boy. Now you get away from here and stay away. note is good, the land is his. But... But what? Well, somehow the judge didn't seem convincing, like he was trying to talk himself into something. Like he was afraid of something. You know, maybe like a lot of old-timers jelly, he remembered about how that land was long before Hackett took it over. It was part of an old Spanish land grant called El Pretrero de Satanas. You heard of it? Yeah. But what's it mean? Well, it's just uh, an old wise tale. Did you find out anything about Weir? No, not much. People were very reluctant to talk about it. He's a man that, you know, bobs up, appears in one place and disappears and appears again. Also, he's a man that seems to have a knack for cashing in on other people's troubles. Been everything from a ribbon peddler to a car dealer, well digger. Matter of fact, he dug a well near here several years ago. A well? Did Hackett ever employ you? 
First thing I ask. Nobody seems to know for sure. Seems that the only one that might know is Chinese Charlie. Crazy old miner up Salt Canyon? That's right, the one that witnessed the note. Apparently, he and Weir used to dig wells together. Well, that could explain a lot. I mean, Weir could have found out about that water. And then waited till Hackett was dead and then forged his name on the paper, along with Chinese Charlie. Yeah, the only witness. I guess that's where all the answers are. You're not going up there tonight. And I'm not going to wait till morning. It's a long ride. You want company? Murdoch, you getting superstitious in your old age? Just cautious. I know Weir can be a mighty deadly customer. That's what I'll find out. I'll tell you what you're going to find out. You're going to find out the temperature in hell. That's what you're going to find out. <laughs> Boy, I thought you'd want your poncho. Did you see anybody right away? Not the way I come. Did you hear anybody? Well, no. Now, take it easy, Johnny. Well, he was here. Did you hear anybody? Did you see his horse? No, he don't ride a horse. Now, you know that. Look, Jelly, I want you to ride on back to Lancer. Tell Murdoch to meet me at Hackett's place. I think we're overstepped himself. Oh, well, then you better take this, will you? What is it? Uh, well, don't worry about it. It can't do you any harm. Well, it's just a chicken bone and feather and a little seashell. The Modocs used to keep away the snake spirits. Jelly, look, I won't be running into any snake spirits. No, you're going to be running into a lot worse. Why don't you just give him the land? It's not the land, it's Silas. It's the boy's soul. Why don't you come right out and say it? It's the boy's mind. I can't see it rotted away by a man like Weir. But he isn't a man. Can't you understand that? He ain't alive! He never has been!
Was he here when you went to sleep? I don't know. You try to remember, it's important. Oh, silent. Come out of the cornfield, silent. I gotta go, Johnny. I'll do Silas, I can't let you go out there. I got to, Johnny. I got to. Silas, I'd come to take that man to the law. Uncle Ab? What's he done? He frauded your father. And then he killed a man to cover it. But you can't take him in. That's what a lot of people have been telling me. But I want to try. You really got to take him? I'm sorry, Silas. I got to. Johnny, maybe this land was never meant to be mine. I heard once in town that it was always a devil's land. The Potrero de Satanás. Is it true? I don't know. It's a story I used to hear when I was a little kid. That someplace the devil kept a barren piece of land where he planted his dead souls until he was ready to reap them. But, Johnny, maybe it ain't just a story. Don't doubt the devil, Silas, just this one. Johnny, are you dead sure? No. Stay here. Come to me, Johnny. We'll come face to face. There's nothing to fear, Johnny Madrid. Sure, Silas. But there's an if. What's the if? If you stick around until your uncle gets here. Now get up there. That's a promise. Come on, Dad. If 
where wasn't the devil? How is it he took so much trouble to make us think he was? Well, I'd say it's to keep us ordinary mortals from wanting to look into that note. Luckily, though, some of us wouldn't knuckle under to fear. Right, Jelly? <laughs> See you in town. The first round's on me. Uh, well, no, I'm going to stay here and bed down early. Well, so long, Jelly. See you later, Joe. Bye. <laughs>